if I just keep writing lists, maybe I'll finish this truck. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Road to Scale Nationals. In this series, Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself are building trucks to take to the Scale Nationals that's going to happen in Leesburg, Alabama in 45 days. Time is ticking. So we've got a lot of work to get done, but I did get a substantial amount done since the last time you saw this. Not as much as I would have hoped. It was a lofty goal, but things have still happened. Class two got a little bit of attention. Class one got most of the attention like the last time, but let's start with what got done for the class two truck first. So the class two truck, as you saw it last time, basically unchanged underneath of this thing right now. This is the carbon fiber cliffhanger body that we will be adapting to this truck as time progresses. But for now, uh, what you can see inside is a 3D printed roll cage. Now that is not because I plan to use a 3D printed roll cage is that it wouldn't be very strong and you wouldn't get nearly as many points. So it's not the plan, but I do want to actually support the inside of this body for strength. So the reason that I'm making this in 3D printing first is so that I can confirm the shaping that I, you know, designed for that way, my templates that I make inevitably to actually fabricate the roll cage that will go in here. I know that they're perfect. 3D printing is easy. Once I get to a point in the design of Fusion 360, I can just send it to the 3D printer and my Prusa knocks them out. Uh, they, it actually does a really good job with this tube work. I print these cages upside down. This one I shortened because the length of it isn't really that important. It's just mainly the shape, where the bends are, where the width is, things like that. So. I've gone through a number of revisions. This one has actually got a cut in it where I was trying to determine how far off I was so that I could make the changes in CAD and go back, little things like that. Designing roll cages around pre-existing bodies, not super easy. Uh, it's probably easier to do that by hand in some ways, but this didn't take that much time. I can make some progress, hit print, send it to the printer, and then work on something else for a couple hours while this is accomplished. Little things like that save me time now so that I can crank the actual end product out in the shop when that time comes. I still need to finalize this. One of those things that I haven't got back to after the last print so that I can make what I hope are the final round of changes before it's done. The whole point of this roll cage will be to support the roof line back here and then the A pillar. The A pillar is my biggest concern is I don't wanna blow out um, and destroy the A pillar of this body. Even after I actually fabricate it, I may take some additional steps to help uh, support the A pillar to the roll cage, maybe with some filler pieces that are 3D printed to help transmit any forces that the A pillar takes to the actual roll cage that would be behind it. And at that point I have to decide, is it worth doing a titanium cage in here or do I go a little bit easier and go with some DOM tubing? Titanium has kind of been a trend so far with these builds. It's harder to work with, but uh, it is fun at the same time. So I don't know, titanium or DOM steel, you guys throw your suggestions in there. Try and sway me one way or the other. Beyond the cage for the carbon fiber cliffhanger. We did start to work on the provisions for class three of this. Right now, you see that we've got the standard F10 portal rear axle in there. And I talked last time about my plans to take a F10 front portal where I cut off the outer C's and adapt them to a centered rear axle. And I've done that. Here we have what is now my new rear axle, steering axle where I've adapted the outer C hubs to that center section. And then I designed a custom truss that helps bridge and support everything together. And I cut this truss out of some three millimeter carbon fiber on my Stepcraft CNC router. This helps again, just connect these outer C's to the center section of the axle so that nothing rotates. Keeping everything aligned is done with the tubes that come with this stock rear axle, but I did need to machine them down. So I threw them into my mini lathe, just cut them to length. One thing that I will do after I get just everything 100%, I'm dead set on 
the fit and finish of every part. I've got it assembled and make sure that everything works. Then I'll take those tubes back out and I'm going to put some two part epoxy in and around that you know, that bore of the housing and get that tube to press down in there. I'll probably rough up the outside of the tube just to make sure that everything really bonds together. And we're gonna just permanently affix that tube in the housing. Not too worried about anything beyond that. And I think it'll work out quite well. Now you can see that I bolted through the front side, or this will technically be the back side of the axle housing, uh, through to the other side. Now, rather than just putting that back there, I made up a perfectly fit, PETG spacer that sits there. It actually keys into the holes that are in the stock F10 rear housing and they sit in there. It gives me a nice flat space all the way across with some washers as well to make sure that those screws don't wanna pull through. Just giving myself even a little bit more reinforcement. On this rear axle, I've also already installed my Holmes servo. This is the SHV650, so super powerful rear steer servo. Rear steer actually, don't let it you know, fool you into thinking that you don't need a powerful servo. You put all of the weight of your truck on that rear axle a lot of times, you know, on courses you're climbing. And if you don't have a rear, strong rear steer servo, sometimes it can want to just kind of flop over and you don't have the power needed. So a rear steer servo still needs to be just as powerful as the front. Now, technically this one's a little bit more powerful than the SHV 500 V3 that I've got up here, but we'll make it work. Custom inner axle shafts are still a thing that I have to do, but I'll get to that and show you exactly how I'm gonna do that next time, for sure. This thing should be able to be put on the truck by the next time. I still have to keep making a little bit of progress at this thing or it's never gonna get done. Or I'm gonna be just mad rushed last three days before this event, but none of those things sound that unlikely. Any of those scenarios actually could be the case. So a little bit here and there chipping away on this makes me feel just a little bit better about my neglect and my absolute obsession over my class one. And speaking of that, let's jump over to it. Okay, on to the class one, the truck that I cannot stop working on. Maybe it doesn't look like that though, because there's not a whole lot of like visual differences unless you really start looking. First things first, uh, the cage is finally completely finished welded. All of the bars are in place, including the rear bumper that sits back here. That's welded in, all of the tubes are fully welded, or tubes, solid rod, whatever you wanna call it, fully welded, so the cage is done. And other than the fact that I probably need to pull it all off one more time to put the final side panels on, since the screws to affix these side panels actually sit on these mounts behind the slider. So it needs to come out one more time to put the final side panels that will go on here in place, and then this can go back in. Otherwise, I'd be able to leave it forever now, but not so lucky. Then getting back into the forged carbon fiber. That's the process where you take the chopped up pieces of carbon fiber, layering it in with uh, resin, more carbon, and then you compress it all down with a vise and leave it for 24 hours. Last week I showed you, or two weeks ago, I showed you that process for the fender and the uh, cowl was in process during that. I showed a little bit of a clip of it in the end of the video, but since then I have completed the cowl completely as well as the windshield frame. Every time I design a mold for this process, I learn something and I improve and I keep going. The mold design is absolutely the most time consuming and difficult part of this. The actual process of the forged carbon fiber, not that difficult and really rewarding, really fun. And I enjoy the style of this. So uh, I'm pretty happy. When I did the cowl, there's a kind of a a hole here on the side, whatever you want to call it, just an area that didn't get proper fill or proper compaction. I have a plan on how I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna build up a little bit of a, a wall around that. I'm going to chop up some of that chopped toe even further, mix it with some resin, and then fill it in that area. I'll go back and final sand it after the fact. But I think that that'll do the trick and it'll give me a consistent look as far as uh, the finish and outward style. I also have a little bit of pinholing in the resin. I'm not worried enough about that to go back and like refill and then sand and all that. Windshield frame turned out great. I left myself a nice lip around the outside of this frame or the inside of it, whatever you wanna call it, the, the outside of the inside. So 
That was specifically done so that I can cut myself a windshield that will fit in there perfectly. I have a plan for how I'm gonna do that with painting it to give it the nice black rim, but I'm actually going to paint it before I cut it. And I'll go through that process next time as well. I thought it out in my head and in my head, it's a great plan. We'll see if it's genius or stupid. <laughs> it's a 50, 50 shot around here. The other thing with this windshield frame is that currently it's just double-sided taped into position. And while the double-sided tape I used was actually really strong, I can, can I lift the whole truck up? Wow, I can, I haven't done that yet. Um, I mean, that makes me feel like maybe I don't need to take this next step, but I need to drill, or I thought I needed to drill to put some hardware in to attach the windshield frame to the cowl. And to do that, I was going to 3D print myself some drill guides. So I could take this off, drill it perfectly, and then have another drill guide that would go on the cowl so I could drill it with the corresponding locations and that then everything would line up. Because drilling it in place, I don't really have a great angle of attack to get it all just right. With how well that double-sided tape fits and with how thin of a tape that it was, I may just cut this whole part out of the video. Then onto the next part, which I talked about a little bit in the last video. It wasn't like something I was 100% planning on doing, but ended up doing it. And that is something that you can actually see from there. And you can see the engine in the bottom, just behind the front axle. If you pull this off, you can see the rest of it. Uh, on top here, we've got an LS style engine. We've got the intake manifold throttle body and the intake you know, air hose and box itself. This area here will have a filter element looking thing. I didn't have the color filament that I wanted to print that, but I will. I've ordered it and it'll be here tomorrow actually. But we've got an orange block and heads with silver colored valve covers. The air box here goes over top of the steering servo position. And I actually swapped steering servos to a Holmes 500 LP servo. It's the low profile. So a little bit shorter than a standard servo that was in there. This one actually just makes things a little bit easier for this detail. And it's still a ton of power. So by no means am I shorting myself too much. I'm still gonna have five or 600 ounce inches even if I'm only running 3S. So that'll do. Next to it, we've got the winch and uh, I haven't added any detail to that. It just kind of looks like a piece of aluminum up there, some screws, it's not that out of place. Maybe I could add some detail to that, but the hood actually is just a millimeter or two away from the top of this. So not a lot of room for depth of the detail. So it may just stay how it is. Now I designed most of this on my Sunday live stream, STL Sunday or 3D printing Sunday. And that's where I kind of go through and show you guys what I do in CAD and how I do it. And I took an existing model, an actual full-size model of an LS3 engine, and I kind of showed how I cut it up to make it work in a situation like this. And we've got most of what the outcome of that was here. I simplified the model a lot so that it was in the best shape possible for 3D printing at this scale. And then I also added in some bosses so that I could use the actual scale hardware like I have here, just as a simple touch, and sliced some things up so I could break things up for color. You know, the manifold, the throttle body, I designed the intake myself. And then again, the bottom half of the engine is a whole nother thing. I wanted that in there so that it gave it the real depth to call it a 3D engine. This is more 3D than most people would have actually done or used to call it, but I added the whole bottom part just so we could say it's there. I've got the bottom half of the block, which is actually in the proper position for this LS engine in this scale. Everything is there, but it is two pieces because there's a chassis brace in the way. So I've got the bottom half of the block. I've got the main, the lower pulley, downsized a little bit to fit properly. And then I've got the oil pan that wraps around the actual motor plate of the VFD transmission. The lower main pulley actually has a piece of scale hardware in it as well. And everything fits perfectly. That main pulley is maybe a millimeter, millimeter and a half at most away from the backside of this axle at full compression. It's just, everything is perfect. Of course, I'm cheating a little bit because I've got very accurate CAD models, but everything it's just everything keeps going everything just fits right it looks right and it just goes to plan which feels good and strange at the same time to help complete the look of the front we do have what does look like a little undersized radiator i didn't go full width here for a reason and that's because i do plan on putting headlights in 
the grill of this. Now, this grill that's in here is not the final design. The final design actually looks like this. Um, it's got smaller openings for the headlights because these are sized to actually fit Vanquish Q series headlights. So a little bit smaller in size and you can see that it's got more height. So the slots are completed all the way down and there's a bottom to the grill. This one was cut short because previously the chassis rail and chassis brace extended forward quite a distance. But since then, we've cut that off to the length that I had planned on and cut the chassis brace back. So now where this grill sits and there is nothing below it now, this grill would actually fit properly in that area. That will give this truck more front height and a better visual appearance. Also, that radiator that we were discussing, it fills those grill slots, so it looks more complete than you would think. Now, along with this 3D printed engine that sits in there and everything that I've done, I ended up staring at this area a lot. And one thing that was bugging me was just all of this big flat area next to the engine. I just, I started to not like it and started to think that it looked really plain with that engine just sitting in the middle. So I modified the design of this and added some like, you know, geometric cutouts like you would see in sheet metal. So that just kind of gave it a little bit of extra style. And then I sent that off to send cut send to have cut out of metal. And I had it cut out of two different types of metal. One, aluminum, because it looks appropriate. But I also had it cut out of titanium because I want to see, I just want to see. I've used a lot of titanium, a lot of carbon fiber. And I felt like, ah, it'd be worth seeing it in titanium as well. So I had those cut out. Those shipped to me today. They're actually supposed to be here, arriving to me tomorrow or the day that this episode actually airs. Now with those, like I said, I did cutouts, which are all the way through. And I wanted to kind of make them look a little bit fancier. And I had an idea. I've used mesh behind cutouts before. And I found a really fine stainless steel mesh that looked good and close to scale to use in those applications. So I have some of that here still, but one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to the mesh. So I designed myself some stamps. Now I've covered stamping metal with 3D printed molds before. I did a whole video on it actually. And I've never done it with anything other than aluminum, especially a pretty soft aluminum. And I was like, maybe I could do it to this stainless steel mesh and uh, you know give these things so it kind of pops up into the area that's cut out. So I went through again on an STL Sunday and designed these stamps and then cut out some pieces of that nice stainless steel mesh and went to town and it turned out perfect. Now this is going to be a super just minor detail, just ep epically minor. We're going to see it here on the top next to the engine bay. And then also we're going to see it on the inner fender area to give that some more pop as well. That you're going to see that more. You're going to see it through the fenders. It's going to look appropriate like you would see in a full size, you know, with some, some venting to give the engine more re room to breathe. I'll do the same for those areas as I did up top, but I'll have to get some close up shots. I know you can see it maybe a hair in the uh, video here, but it's only about a millimeter and a half of definition, but that's going to perfectly stick up through those and just go the extra mile. I don't know why I did it either, but let me tell you, I feel like it was worth it. <laughs> the stainless steel mesh that I'm using is actually from a splatter guard used for like cooking or, you know, cooking bacon. So it doesn't splatter up on you. Just a stainless steel thing that covers your pan normally. I just cut out a little piece as necessary. It, it's perfect. Speaking of that grill that we were discussing a few minutes ago and send cut send, uh, I threw one of those grill designs into that order of titanium as well, because a titanium grill may also look pretty cool. So we're going to see. I showed you guys the design of the front bumper last time. Nothing has happened since then. When I designed that front bumper, I designed some custom brackets for it. Also in the order from Send, Cut, Send. If you guys aren't familiar with Send, Cut, Send, they sponsored the Scale News Update after I used them for uh, some of these titanium pieces in the back. But their website, you upload your own designs and they will cut it out for you. It is wildly price effective. There's a link in the description below that tells them I sent you. You can use it if you want. I don't get a kickback or anything like that. It's just cool to see. Click on the link, go upload something if you've got it. You'd probably be surprised at the price. Once those front bumper brackets do arrive, also out of titanium, 
that's when we're gonna get into the actual fabrication of the front bumper. And that should be the last piece of metal fabrication for this truck, for Nationals. Another project that I undertook here was these rear inner fender slash interior panels. Now, I showed you the process of vacuum forming this interior tunnel, but took went through most of that same process for these rear inner fenders. And I'm even more happy with how they came out. I designed and printed the parts in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed the molds to be vacuum formed. With these, I decided to make the molds much simpler than previous. In the previous ones, I was trying to add the draft angle and things like that. And I was figuring for something so one-off, maybe I can get away with less work. And I'm glad that I did. Uh, on here, no draft angle at all, but there is no undercuts either. Other than the fact that I modeled in a line that is like a guideline for me to use when trimming the final part. And that detail came through fantastic and helped me get just clean cut lines throughout. These are just the perfect shape. Uh, with this, I printed it at a 5% infill and then I backfilled with plaster of Paris. So took me a little bit of time to get into each of the cavities, but once I did that, backfilled with plaster so that there was no heat to collapse these things down in on themselves, it just worked perfect. And these things pulled great. And the fit, surprise, also almost perfect, except I made one major oversight. And that was the fact that I designed my molds, you know, for the outside, I thought, except I forgot to take into account the fact that the material went over these molds on both sides when they drew down, and the fact that that then added 0.75 millimeters to each side, one and a half millimeters total. So they're actually a millimeter and a half too wide, and that kind of pushes out on the body panel here. But I do have an outer flange here on the outside. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna end up cutting that entire flange off and then just cutting back ever so slightly to give myself enough room to make sure that the panel fits on without adding any stress to it, just to make sure that everything's in just the right spot. A little bit of an oversight, hopefully I don't make that mistake again, but it could happen. Beyond that, everything else lined up perfectly with how the shocks go through the actual inner fenders. I made a nice opening for it with a nice deep flange that kind of went around so it looks purposeful rather than just a hole that I cut for the shocks. And then I also notched around in the design for where the titanium plates go down and meet the chassis. All of that was designed right into this mold itself. And it just, again, translated to a really nice part that I'm proud of and I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that it came out the way that I hoped. Continuing on with the process of finishing up some of these things, I did cut myself the carbon fiber floor pan and carbon fiber firewall that replaced the acrylic units that I was using previously. So those are in there, everything looks nice. They did make everything even more rigid and secure. So it, it's just a nice solid unit. The, carbon fiber firewall and everything, the fenders, it all just starts to really turn into a rock solid unit. I did go through and use titanium hardware to attach everything <laughs> with the carbon fiber because uh, weight savings. Probably could order some aluminum, but titanium seemed more appropriate. If you guys have a good source for aluminum or titanium hardware, let me know, because I probably will order more to complete a number of things for this truck. So if you guys have a good supply or location of a supplier for that, let me know. I could use to save myself some money somewhere in this truck. I did get the rock sliders painted on this, primed and painted. Let me tell you how much I screwed that up. I had to sand them down and repaint one of them two times because it doesn't matter what I'm painting, I'm terrible at it. And lastly, on the interior detail side, I've had these 3D printed seats in the vehicle the whole time. And uh, this is just a very lightweight, minimal infill 3D printed seat model that I've been using. Uh, it weighs next to nothing. But to get rid of the 3D printed look as much as possible, I got myself a cheap flocking kit off of Amazon. And uh, this isn't something I'd ever done before. It's basically a really fine, fibrous type powder that you put into this little squeeze bottle and you put in this case a acrylic paint 
on it, which is black as well. Um, and then you just hoof, <laughs> onto the seat and it gives you something that looks fabric like now I haven't sealed this or anything like that I think that I'm going to before this is over I'll reprint a seat flock it just before and then seal it with some sort of top coat uh, of which I haven't researched what will be best um, yet but we'll probably get to that and it makes it look nothing like a 3D printed item at all. You can't see any layer lines or any definition of 3D printing. It just looks more fabric like in our scale. I didn't know that there was multiple scales of flocking or anything like that. I found one available, I bought it, it showed up, I used it and it worked. So um, I got lucky, I'm told, but success nonetheless. Now, the major hurdles that are left are mainly associated with the design and execution of the forged carbon fiber at this point. The bumper in the front, I'm not afraid of. I think that that's going to just be a process that's going to take me three or four hours or so to get the front bumper done and out of the way. But the actual design of the you know molds for the rear half of this body and the hood and then the other fender, I imagine that I'm still going to have tens and tens of hours into before I'm ready to start 3D printing them, which will likely be multiple days worth of 3D printing alone, plus the time to load the molds and then let them cure overnight. And hopefully I am able to keep getting these things done in the first shot. So far, I haven't had to redo a panel, but I have not done anything the size of this hood yet. And this rear piece, I'm actually going to break up into a number of smaller pieces, like a corner, a roll pan and a corner, something along those lines. But again, I have learning to do and uh, I expect to screw up. I, I'm not afraid of it. I'll, I'll learn more by doing that. But nonetheless, it's time out of the timeline and uh, that's cranking away. So what do you guys think? Where do you think the pitfalls are going to be in my plan here? What do you think I'm going to fall short on or have to cut some corners? There's a lot to do on both of these. I know that I keep focusing so much on the class one, but I know that's where my time is really going to be needed. I don't plan to paint either of these bodies. The class one, I should be able to polish out these parts a little bit to more of a shine. Probably not quite the gloss that we see on the class two body, but a little bit more than what it's got right now. But beyond that, you know, once all of these parts are the forged carbon fiber, I'm wondering if there's something I should put on it. A little bit of a graphic or, or just something that is needed. I don't want to clear coat it to get the full pop just because I'm afraid of it chipping or flaking or not adhering well and absolutely destroying the things that I need for my timeline. So that's the reason at this point I have no intention of spraying a clear coat over top of this. But I still feel like it could use something once it's done, especially when, you know, once this is all carbon, we're in a different world. So let me know what you guys think there. A, a graphic or, or something is needed, I feel like. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This series has been an absolute blast for me. I'm so excited uh, just to get back to some real interesting fabrication for me, at least. Uh, this is the stuff I enjoy the most. Just learning something, trying something I haven't done before, seeing if I can actually execute it. And uh, I think that's the most fun part of the hobby for me. So hopefully you guys are along for the ride and it's got something in there that maybe interests you enough to try it. If there's something I can help with, let me know. Happy to give you any of the information that I'm learning from this. Once the template for this cliffhanger cage is done, absolutely plan to throw that up on my website so that you too could build yourself a cage for the inside of your you know, normal Lexan version of a cliffhanger because this is basically to those same specs. So hopefully that'll help some of you or I'll actually put up the STL as well in case you wanna just 3D print one to have the look inside of your body. I appreciate you all. Thanks again for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoy any part of this. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in two weeks.